morning, everybody. Good morning to you. Uh, we've got a beautiful love hymn in Christ alone. Um, it's a lovely recording from the Bellingham United Church, and we're going to stand as we're able. Christ into the world to be with us forever. And we light the candle. The presence of Christ with us, the light that shines in the darkness, and that the darkness will never put out. And as we stand with and before these things, we come gathered into this place with knowledge of all that has come before us. 
and knowledge that this land is God's land and that God's spirit dwells here. We acknowledge the Wurundjeri people, traditional custodians of this land under God, and we continue to commit ourselves to working for reconciliation in this land. So welcome. Welcome to church this morning. Bruce told me I had to wear this. Um, but now that I've done that, I'll put my other style back on. <laughs> um, I believe there are a few happy Collingwood supporters around. Well done. <laughs> well done. So welcome to all of you who join us in worship this morning here in this place, as well as online and later on YouTube. We are continuing today in the story of David. And this is a, a story of where God promises David to be with him forever. And so we're going to explore a little bit about what some of the promises might be and what are the promises we get given through Christ. So that's um, what we are doing as well as sharing in communion today. So let me begin as we would normally and share the peace. Let me say to you, the peace of Christ be with you all. Let's take a moment to stand, wave, acknowledge each other as we share that peace. Send a text if you wish, whatever is the easiest way to do so. As we've been in the past few weeks, we're um, sharing not only an Old Testament reading, but also a, a psalm. And Carol's going to read us the full section of the psalm a little bit later, but I've used some of it for our call to worship this morning. I will sing about the wonders of your love forever, O God. I will tell everyone I meet about your faithfulness to all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm, that your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens above. Blessed are those who know you as their God, for they walk in the light of your presence. So let's stand as we are able and sing together, um, shout to the Lord, my Jesus.
Let us come before God now with our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray. Divine Architect, from the beginning you have breathed life into our universe. Dancing spirit, you hovered over the chaos and crashing atoms and created a wonder of stars and planets beyond our imagining. Servant King, you came among us and showed us the depth of God's love for creation and invited us to become co-creators using our gifts to create heaven on earth. Each generation discovers you for themselves through creation and through your word made flesh. Each one of us has to learn that we are not perfect and that life can be difficult and painful sometimes. Each one of us has to learn to express our emotions and choose how we react to situations and people that disturb or cause us anxiety. Knowing that you journey with us gives us courage to face whatever life brings. Knowing that Jesus lived a full life like ours gives us comfort and helps us as we make our choices. We are sorry that sometimes our choices are neither wise nor helpful for ourselves or others. We admit that we can be destructive when emotions overwhelm us. We confess that we find life hard to deal with and that we often forget to turn to you for help. Forgive us, O oh God. Grant us the grace to accept our imperfections and to seek your help and those of the people we trust, so that we might go forward making wiser decisions and choices. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. One of the most amazing things, I believe, is that we do know that God hears our prayer, regardless of whether we ask it or not. And we also know that God loves us amazingly and that God give, forgives us continuously. So know that. Trust in that promise that you are loved and forgiven. And what else can we say but thanks be to God. Let's stand as we're able and sing. First reading this morning comes from Psalm 89. 
And we're reading verses 20 to 37, and then we'll go on to 2 Samuel. Psalm 89. I have found my servant David with my holy oil, and I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God and the rock of my salvation. I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Forever I will keep my steadfast love for him and my covenant with him will stand firm. I will establish his line forever and his throne as long as the heavens endure. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with scourges. But I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once and for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall continue forever, and his throne endure before me like the sun. It shall be established forever, like the moon, an enduring witness in the skies. And now on to 2 Samuel from chapter 7, reading the first 17 verses. Now, when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But in that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to my shepherd, my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you forever, wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and, plant, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled, you will lie down, you lie down with your ancestors. I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And I will be a father to him, 
and he shall raise he, he shall be a son to me when he commits in, iniquity i will punish him with a rod such as mortals use with blows inflicted by human beings but i will not take my steadfast love from him as i took it from saul who i put whom i put away from before you your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever with me your throne shall be established forever in accordance with all these words and with all this vision nathan spoke to david and for these words of faith and jesus the word thanks be to god thank you carol okay what did we hear what was different what do you question what surprised you any ideas Here comes pete Oh, uh, well, I thought it was, Nick. Right, testing. Uh, what I thought was, was um, that when David said to Nathan, first of all, oh, look, I'm going to, I want to build a house for God, you know, we're settled in the land now. And Nathan said, okay, go for it. Uh, and then God says to Nathan, well, you know, that's not quite right. This is what I wanted to tell David. And so then he gave him the full message about David would not build the house, um, but in fact his son was. I wasn't listening, but in any case, he, God ultimately said that. So the question is, now Nathan was a prophet, and you know he should have known straight away what God had intended for David, but that's not what happened. He had to wait for a specific word from God in order to do it. So I'm, I'm a bit uncertain of what conclusion to draw from this. However, it was an interesting point to note that Nathan didn't get it right first off, and God had to tell him specifically what to do and what to say. Indeed. Thank you, Pete. Anyone else? Any other thoughts, inquiries? Very. I suppose um, I was thinking that David didn't have to do anything special. He was just chosen and all the promises he was making was saying, well, you don't have to. I've chosen you. You don't have to do anything special. You are just fine as you are. You just have to know that I love you and I'll be with you. Yep, indeed. There was no bargaining chips being offered. Anything else? Any others that grab you? Okay. A lot of forever messages. There yeah. was a lot yeah. of forever messages. No matter what. Yep. Even if things go pear-shaped, you know, I, I will not. I think it was said, you know, at least four or five times. Yep. Yeah, I'll keep the covenant. I'll keep the covenant. Yeah. I will love the I love the fact that God says when your offspring misbehave, not if, but when, I'll still be there. Which is beautiful. Let's stand as we're able and sing ancient words. Holy words of a faith had a 
So as we continue to hear about the story of David, today we hear promises from God to David that will ensure that David's line will endure forever, that they will be a blessing and that David's name will be great, like the name of the great ones of the earth. As Peter reminded us, Nathan is a prophet and Nathan delivers these promises from God following David's desire to build a house for God to live in. This is the promise or the covenant that God declares with David and ultimately with David's offspring and heirs. It will be the offspring of David who build the house of God and God will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. When he commits iniquity, God will punish him with a rod, but God will not take away God's steadfast love. The house of David and David's kingdom shall be made sure forever before God. And David's throne shall be established forever. As Ellison said, lots of forevers in that. Now those last three verses actually has the word forever repeated three times. This promise of forever, no matter what happens, leads us through the rest of David's reign, through the best and the worst times of David, as well as the best and the worst of his offerings. This of offsprings, I should say. This promise of forever is seen again as the line of David leads to Jesus and God's presence with us forever. This morning I want to take a moment or two and just remind us of some of the promises that Jesus and God gives us. Promises that are forever and promises that will not be broken. Throughout the life of Christ that we read in the Gospels, there are many times when he promises his disciples or the people around him of God's continuing love and presence. In the Gospel of John, in chapter 3, Jesus gives the promise of salvation. At verse 16, he declares, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. This promise assures us that through faith in Jesus, we will not perish, but have the assurance of eternal life with God. It is a promise that offers hope in the face of our imperfections or iniquity and reassures us of God's boundless love and grace. John's Gospel gives us a whole list of the promises that Jesus gave. Maybe next time you read through John, you might want to write some of those down. In chapter 14, at verse 15, we are promised the advocate to be with us forever. This is the Holy Spirit and she will remain with us and abide in us. 
This is the promise that we are never alone in our journey through life. Whether we face trials, temptations or moments of joy, Jesus is there to walk beside us, providing guidance, strength and companionship. Jesus backs up this promise to always be with us in Matthew at chapter 28, verse 20, at the end of the Great Commission where Jesus says, And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now the promise of Jesus is the promise of peace. In John 14 at verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This promise reminds us that in the midst of life's storms and uncertainties, in other words, those Goliath moments, we can find profound and lasting peace through our relationship with Christ. The promise of transformation is another remarkable aspect of Jesus' teachings. In 2 Corinthians at chapter 5, verse 17, it is written, So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away and everything has become new. This promise speaks to the power of God to change and renew our lives, to remake us into what we were originally made for and to enable us to live in righteousness and grace. These are but some of the promises that Jesus makes to his disciples and therefore makes to us. The word forever features just as strongly in Christ's promises as it does in the promises God made to David. All of these promises offer us hope in times of despair, peace in times of turmoil and assurance in times of doubt. They tell of the love, grace and presence we are promised forever, no matter what we may do. Now I've made a point of referencing a movie over the last couple of weeks that I think helps to see an aspect of our theme. So I want to leave us with a Star Wars image. Or maybe the sound of Obi-Wan Kenobi's voice speaking to Luke, saying, Trust in the Force, Luke. For me, the Force is the Holy Spirit, always with us, helping us when needed, informing us and inspiring us to do more, always connecting us with the triune God, forever. Let's take a moment to think about that.
time for our joys and concerns, and we invite those who are watching on Facebook to add any in, as well as prayers. Um, I'm going to kick off. Stephanie handed her thesis in on Thursday, her time. So it's in. 490 pages. As she said, yeah, well, roughly 10 pages per year. <laughs> 100 pages per year, sorry. <laughs> so, she's uh, relaxing, which is good. Any other joys, concerns, thoughts, prayers? Sorry, Dave. Uh, so, on Thursday, um I was just uh, walking down the street and I saw a gentleman literally fall backwards and hit his head and um, did some decent trauma to his head and um, I was able to kind of help him with some first aid and call the ambulance and so we just, um, I guess we could just pray for pray him. Pray for that man, yes yeah. indeed. Yeah. And give thanks that you were there. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Dave. Anyone else? Sorry, Kerry, I knew you'd be there and I was coming around the wrong way. <laughs> I'll grab Doug as I walk past. <laughs> I think we should be praying for the selection process for the minister for the future ministry in this place after Jay has, uh, has left. Um, pray for the um, preparation of that person and the uh, preparation of uh, this congregation to, um, to accept. Thank you. You've told me that one, I've forgotten it. Thank you, Doug. I'd just like to pray for the kids and teachers who are going back to school and hope they have a fruitful and exciting term. Indeed. This is term four, isn't it, Dave? Turn four you're going into? Yeah. Gee, the year is gone. <laughs> All right. Bruce, is there anything on the Facebook? No. Okie dokie. Let's have a little look what we've got on our prayer points. Um, so we continue to pray for Lois Bates, for Mark Reed, for Shaz. Uh, Shaz is also on to their last... 50 hours, I think it is, in their placement, which means they're nearly finished. Uh, for Thurza, for Melvin and Gordon, uh, John, Lever's sister Kathy, who's had a recurrence of cancer. Uh, Mary Davies is one of our Friday morning people um, who's got a cancer scare as well. And Reverend Graham Reed and his family. Now, Mark Reed tells me that Gra Graham is known to this congregation. Um, and his um, daughter has passed away suddenly so, uh, and was uh, found alone in her place of residence. So we pray for that whole family as they go through this. And happy birthday to our October birth people, birthday people. I believe Dave is celebrating a significant zero birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've been asked to pray for Pakenham Congregation um, and their Supply Minister Robert L. Cusin, their leaders and their congregation. The Assembly has asked us to um, pray for Colleen, General Secretary Colleen Gear, Geyer as she prepares to step down from her role after eight years of faithful and courageous leadership. We give thanks to God for her legacy, her dedication to the United Church and pray God's blessings now and in the time to come. The older people in our church, families and communities as we celebrate Older Person Sunday this weekend. There we go, I didn't know it was Older Person Sunday. May we honour their contributions, faithfulness and wisdom. The Uniting Church Neo National Conference is meeting this weekend in Sydney and as part of the World Council of Churches Ecumenical Prayer Cycle we pray for Bolivia, Brazil, Chile and Peru. So let us 
come and pray these things to God. Bring these things before God. Let us pray. Amazing God, you fill us with your promises. May we remember to rely upon them. At this time, Lord, we call on the promise that you hear us, that you will be with us. And so we bring to you things that are on our hearts, people and places, situations, joys, concerns, best wishes. Of all the things we've named, Lord, may you be in and amongst, responding as you know best to do, caring for those we've mentioned, letting all know of your promises, particularly the one of your love and presence. Help us, Lord, to trust in you. Remind us how open you are that we can always bring prayers such as these to you. And for that, Lord, we are eternally grateful. And we give these things to you in your name. Amen. I wonder if there was a generosity moment that anybody has experienced over the last week or so. Though, having heard what Dave did, that is indeed a generosity moment. Dave, thinking about that, to be able to step in and help someone when they need it, that is generous of your time. So I think that's probably good enough for us to hear today. Hello, Miss Abby. Are you going to, what have you got there? I think you could keep that one. I'll be generous and give, let you keep that one. Is that all right? Okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Let's take a moment as we take up our offering. We stand as we dedicate our offering. Amazing God, we give thanks for your wonderful generosity to us. We are truly blessed. We offer these gifts of money, take and use them to continue the work of sharing the good news with all people. May it help locally, nationally and globally. Let it be a sign of our ongoing commitment to be your disciples. This, Lord, we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you very much. Having a quick look through our notices. Where are we? Uh, worship, we got our dates right. So next week, we um, continue with the prophet Nathan as uh, he has a serious conversation with David. Sunday morning prayer continues in the foyer. Uh, Thursday evenings this week, we are doing a series around prayer and different sorts of prayer and how that comes out in the Bible. So please feel free to join us, 7.30 till 9. Depending on the weather, we'll meet either in the foyer or the meeting room. Women's, is that right, Alison? Excellent. Women's Bible study is on the 3rd of October. That's this week, 10.15. See Alison for more details. And the Friday program drop-ins is on uh, 10 till 11.30 in the foyer. Reminder about the care fund offering, that we need the money to be in a dedicated space. So if you're able to help, please um, place your donations in an envelope marked care fund or if you are donating online, if you put care fund in the description. Again, just a reminder for your calendar, and there's a few more dates that are in your pew sheet. 
but particularly from the church council, the congregational meeting being called for the 22nd of October and uh, Sunday the 26th of November is the release of pastoral ties for me. The other one I want you to remember is the 29th of October and that is our combined worship service with Lemoore and Coatesville and we are at Coatesville this time. Everything else, please read. There are a number of extra little notices in there. One of which I want to, it's a couple. Um, to do with the congregational meeting, we need to elect a new church, a co new congregational chairperson. The nomination forms are out in the foyer. What also is out in the foyer on the tables just here is um, some books and DVDs and things that um, we've done a little bit of um, work through the library and through some of my books too. So they're there if anybody would like to take any of them, free to a good home, as they say. So feel free to have a little look and see. But please make sure you read the notices. I haven't outlined them all, but there's some important stuff there as well. All right. I invite our elders up as we move into a time of communion. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Are you going to come and help me? No, you're going to help Dad instead. That's fine. <laughs> they will come from east and west, from the back of the church to the front of the church, from north and south, and they will sit at the table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Saviour invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. So let us say, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, our Creator. You have given us life and second birth in your spirit. Once we were no people, but now we are your people. You claimed Israel as your chosen nation and raised up the church as a witness to the resurrection, breathing into it your life and power. From worlds apart, you gathered us together. When we go astray, you welcome us home. Always your love has been steadfast. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In love with you and in compassion for all, Jesus healed and taught, challenged and comforted, welcomed and saved. He formed a community, promising to be with his disciples wherever two or three were gathered, and sending them on his mission of hope and healing in the world. Jesus trusted his life to you and went freely to his death, 
so the world might be set free from suffering and sin. You raised him from death and raise us also to live a new life with him in the power of the Holy Spirit. You send us out to make disciples as he commanded. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and wine from the gifts that you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Christ Jesus. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. And so we say together, great is the mystery of faith. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. That the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of body and the blood of Christ. By your spirit unite with us the living Christ and with all who are baptised in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. O God, today you have called us together to be the church. Unite us now at your table and in one loaf and a common cup. Make us one in Christ Jesus. Let your spirit empower the life we share and ignite our witness in the world. With all who have gone before us, keep us faithful to the gospel teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Give us strength to serve you until the promised day of the resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honour are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the church, now and forever. Amen. Let us say together the prayer that Christ gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. The elders will bring around, first of all, bread, and there are some gluten-free crackers for those who need. I ask that you hold it, and then when everyone is served, we will eat together, and we will do the same with the grape juice as well. I do have a couple of larger cups. If you need a larger cup to hold, just let them. Raise your hand and I'll get there. What are you going to do, young lady? Are you going to come for the ride? Okay. <laughs>
body of Christ broken for us all. Amen. Blood of Christ, shed for us all. Amen. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand for our benediction. So go out from here, knowing that you are a beloved child of God. Give thanks for our time together. Go with each of us and bless us as we take the good news with us. May we know and share the love of God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit in our words and actions. And may we speak and act wisely in all things. Let us sing together, sent forth.